In the crucible of World War II, Germany's most brilliant scientists raced to create an arsenal of terrifying new weapons of mass destruction. A stealth-like transatlantic spacecraft called the Silver Bird. An invisible death ray straight out of science fiction. Rockets, flying saucers, even an atomic bomb. 70 years later, long secret Nazi files reveal the classified blueprints for these and many other devastating wonder weapons. They are the masterworks of a desperate quest to terrify America and their allies, win the war, and rule the world for a thousand years. April 1945. The war against Germany is at an end, and the Third Reich emerges victorious. Hitler's flight to New York is escorted by supersonic jets and greeted with German victory celebrations like those in occupied France. State ceremonies are staged theatrically to heighten the historic moment. A Nazi salute from the Statue of Liberty. New York is in ruins with only just enough left standing for a victory parade to Wall Street. the ultimate nightmare of how World War II could have ended, thanks to Hitler's own dream team of hundreds of scientific masterminds. Rocket science superstar Werner von Braun. Engineer, mathematician, and physicist Irene Breth. Aerospace engineer Eugen Zenger. Even a Nobel Prize-winning nuclear physicist Werner Heisenberg. Through the 20s and 30s, the, the Germans technologically were very, very interested in rocket development, science development, tech, this sort of really advanced aerospace development really became a German forte that the other nations around the world were really lagging behind. From this now defunct top secret high tech German complex, thousands of brilliant engineers, physicists, chemists and their staff are generously funded from the Nazi treasury. Provided with the most modern laboratories in Europe and ordered to develop the deadliest armaments the world has never seen. The Delta winged Lippisch P 13. A vertical takeoff rotor winged warplane half a century ahead of its time. A flying aircraft carrier. And the Zilberfogel, the Silver Bird. A supersonic suborbital spacecraft capable of bringing the Blitz to Broadway. They could have launched a one-way attack on America, ditched the bombers uh, in the ocean, dropped a handful of tons on New York, perhaps. We certainly didn't have any any, air, any defenses that would have stopped them. Silverbird never leaves the drawing board, but today, questions still remain. How did German scientists leap so far ahead of their enemies? What's the science behind these machines? And how close does the genius of Nazi science bring Adolf Hitler to the brink of victory? In the early stages of World War II, Hitler's Blitzkrieg races across a helpless Europe. Germany is the first modern nation to wage so heavily that science and technology are the fast lane to world domination. Hitler 
Hitler probably was very significantly influenced and impacted by dramatic, you know, weapon systems. The Germans tend to have a philosophy of quality over quantity, and they felt that the superior quality would turn the tide. And that was really an extension of, 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 of Hitler's mentality. Hitler uses science to conceive, test, and in some cases deploy a fascinating and frightening series of firsts. From highly advanced long-range ballistic missiles to jet fighters, the first to enter the war, said to overpower the Allies' propeller-driven aircraft, to an early stealth-designed monoplane straight out of Star Wars, decades ahead of America's B-2 stealth bomber. Even kamikaze bombs for a pilot's one-way flight. The Allies are ill-prepared. The American missile development programs during the war were very, very primitive in comparison to what the Germans had already achieved. On this small, remote island off the Baltic Sea is a top-secret complex of laboratories and airfields. Here, Nazi scientists trial the world's first cruise missile, just one of the wonder weapons in development at the Baltic Super Lab. The sleepy seaside town of Peenemunde is the location the Nazis choose for their most secret science. It will become the birthplace of the jet age and the space age. The cradle of the wonder weapons. The Peenemunde location was kind of ideal because it was, it was a really remote part of Germany. Uh, you're close to the Baltic Ocean that you could launch rockets into and you wouldn't have necessarily the problem with somebody, you know, stealing the technology and then getting out to the west. The existence of Peenemunde's satellite town is a strictly controlled state secret complete with futuristic apartment blocks for the scientific elite. But it's also a concentration camp for the expendable prisoners who live, work, and die here as slaves. When they are too weak to continue, they are murdered, lest anyone reveal Hitler's scientific secrets. Peenemunde's scientists are not slaves, but their welfare and that of their families hinges on cooperating with the Nazis. Private trains carry engineers and physicists to the self-contained metropolis of metalwork power plants and proving grounds. Peenemunde becomes the Nazis Los Alamos and their Cape Canaveral. Nineteen forty three, Germany. The Allies pummel the nation in a hail of bombs. But Adolf Hitler still believes in victory. The Nazis plan an arsenal of terrifying new weapons of mass destruction. With capabilities and range so far advanced, not even America will be spared. Hitler entrusts his propaganda minister to rally the German people toward victory and revenge. Joseph Goebbels coins these terms, Vengeance One and Vengeance Two, and the idea was that they would be effective uh, to counter the American air offensive and the British air offensive. The Vengeance One, or V-1, is a revolutionary liquid-fueled pulse jet capable of flying 360 miles an hour on autopilot. Launched from ski ramps or from beneath a flying aircraft, the V-1 bursts into action. A sophisticated gyro compass feedback system guides it toward its target. The V-1 gets nicknamed the buzz bomb for the loud noise its jet engine creates. An odometer tracks its pre-programmed distance, at which point the V-1 is designed